That's awesome, man. I love cobias. Yep, they're a great fish. I've always heard about these stories, guys, running out there in the winter and catching tons of cobia, you know, as many as they wanted to catch. And, um, but I've just never done it. You know, a couple times we've had the decent weather window and I've, I've run out there, you know, 20 miles or 30 miles. But really, you know, I've always heard the further out you go, the, the better these spots are. And, and so we finally had the right weather. It's the right time of year. And, you know, and we had the right boat to do it. Five with them, right the boat. That's awesome, man. Oh, yeah. Come on, come on. Oh. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. Yeah, man, we got the weather here today. We should uh, run out and try these uh, these way out gulf spots that okay. we've never been to. I'm in for it. We got, if we can't catch them with all this gear, <laughs> then we're not gonna catch them. Uh, but yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. We gotta watch that weather a little bit. Uh, some weather coming in this afternoon, so. Yeah. Well, it's calm now. We can run fast and yep. get there quick. But I'm excited about this. This is an area that I've always wanted to go, yep. but never gone out there. There's so many spots in between, just never taking the time to make the big run. About, we're gonna go about 60 miles. Okay. With the new 26 yellowfin that we have, we've really been able to really do a lot of different variety, some different types of fishing that we really haven't had a, had a chance to do much of. And one of those is to you know run further than we would feel comfortable running in a bay boat, get out into a situation where you know we could encounter some rough water and we were gonna run way back into the Gulf. So we knew you know it could be a smooth ride out there. If we play our cards right, it could be a smooth ride back, but if we stay too long, it might get a little dicey. But a boat with a little higher sides like this 26 is really uh, offers us the opportunity opportunity to you know really try some of that stuff and that's exactly what we tried to do running way out there about 60 or 70 miles out into the Gulf and uh, having confidence that we could we could have a, a safe ride home even if the wind started blowing so there's a, a hole right here I guess it's about 40 feet here and then drops down like over 100 in, the, in this in this spring and uh, there's fish you know bait all around it so hopefully we'll we'll find some there's there's definitely critters down there since I was a kid, you know, I've always heard about these stories, guys running out there in the winter and catching tons of cobia, you know, as many as they wanted to catch. And, um, but I've just never done it. You know, a couple times we've, you know, with the bay boat, I've, I've, in the winter I've had the decent weather window and I've, I've run out there, you know, 20 miles or 30 miles. But really, you know, I've always heard the further out you go, the, the better these spots are. And, and, uh, and so we finally had the right weather. It's the right time of year. And, you know, and we had the right boat to do it. Oh, that was a good ride. Yeah. Pretty cool, man. I've always wanted to come out here. This is, uh, you know, I've heard about it for years and years and years. And, um, yeah, me too. Funny thing is, when you get out here, it looks exactly the same as every other places that we've been. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see. You know, it's going to be pretty simple. I mean, we're out there to, to catch cobia generally. Uh, in the cobia fishing that I've done, you're seeing them in some way, shape, or form, like either in the shallow water and you're up on the tower looking down and you see them following the rays, or they're up sunning on the surface. We get to this spot and we don't see anything. This blue runner. You know, when I would fish for the cobias on the wrecks out in the, in the Marquesas, yeah, there would be you know, maybe you caught them there the day before or whatever, and you'd be looking for them and they wouldn't show up. And you know, all your chums going this way. Yep. You decide to leave, so you pick up and you start going this way. And there they are. And there they are. 30 of them just, you know. We're catching these blue runners, but we just were not seeing any cobias at all. We kind of move around just a little bit, not far away from where we were at all, but all of a sudden, I started seeing that the water was a little bit clearer. You put on your, your rig that you wanted to use and you drop that down and it keeps going and you like, I got a bite, I feel him. He just hit eight right there. That's good, buddy. There it is. That's good, buddy. That's just we'll stay ready for a second. Well, one nice line pin fish. Tell you what, I thought we were snake bit there for a minute. Well. We were in the right spot. That's that's all there is to it. Look at them on the surface. There's more. There's ten of them with them. Ten of them with them. See him? 
there's always that period of fishing to where you're like, man, are we in the right spot? Are we doing this right? Should we move? But then you move and it's like, should we have made that move or should we made another move? You start second guessing things. And so to get that first bite is always a big relief. That was the first time we got, wet, got the cast in the right spot. That was so cool, watching them all come up together. Dude, this is a nice fish. You want to net them for me? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So the cobia has to be 33 inches to the fork to be able to keep them. And the first one that we caught, I think might have been just a little bit short, but you know, there were definitely plenty of legal fish around there. A lot of the ones that we're seeing come up are legal fish. I definitely would love to take one home because they're so good to eat. So that was for sure on our mind. I think he's have to be like 33 inches to be legal. He's probably easily that. There he is, <laughs> right, man. That was, whoa, he almost got out of there. Yeah, good job. The gaff is traditionally the way to go. But if you don't know if this fish is legal or not, a landing net is a great way to go because they, they behave nicely in the net. Um, if you can get them suspended into that, into that mesh and let them chill for just one second, they will really calm down in that net. And then you can get an accurate measurement, and if it's not legal, you can let it go, and they do very, very well. So I have to be 33. I think he's well over by then. Actually, he's not. What is he, 30? 32 to the fork. Boy, <laughs> he's his lucky day, huh? That's his lucky day, so. <laughs> Just might let, have, let him. If we fly him out, he might have been just there, but we'll let him go. We'll get plenty more. See you, buddy. They'll we'll probably catch him yeah, again, man. That. That's what Good I'm talking job. about. We'll do that again. Yeah, let's do it again and again and again and again and again. That's a nice one. Oh, this one will make the stick, I believe. This one will make the stick. Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. B&W Trailer Hitches, towing adventure. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. Waypoint, and by Ameritrail. Daiwa. Marathon, Power Pole, and Vibe. There he is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's a good one, man. Right on, buddy. <laughs> now we're in the meat. Wow. It's all about the spot. We're sitting there worrying about the wrong baits, the wrong lures, the wrong everything. And uh, it's all about the spot. Let's see if this guy brings any friends with him. He's definitely gonna bring some friends with him and I'm gonna be ready this time. What was interesting to me is this is a spot, you know, neither one of us had been to. We knew there was a big hole there, but I didn't really know what to look for as far as on the on the bottom machine. You know, when we got out there, we're looking at the, we're looking at the Lawrence and, and it was, you know, showing about 35, 40 feet. You know, we were marking fish, marking other things, um, but didn't see any great structure, no giant drop off or whatever. And we and we we made two or three moves and really just weren't catching any cobia. You know, we were catching some just some, some blue runners and a nice mangrove snapper and some and things, but it was like we knew those cobias were there somewhere. And for, for an hour, we were, we were feeling it go down 30 feet and hit the bottom, and it was stopped. And this time, I threw over, and I felt it just keep going and going and going and going. I had thrown right into this hole. And once we got a bait down in there, it was an immediate bite. And it's interesting, I can feel dropping down in the hole. I mean, there's no question. Mm -hmm. it, and then, oh, I can feel him hitting the ledges there. We might lose this guy on the edge. I can just totally, are we, are, you're, are we marking a hole? Yeah. How deep? 100, it's, I mean, it's kind of at 100, but it's not got clear bottom. Oh, wow. All right, here he comes. That's a nice one. Oh, this one will make the stick, I believe. This one will make the stick. You can just gaff him if you want, or net him, whatever you want to do. He's, I like the net better, honestly. They yeah. behave so much better. Yeah. That's awesome, man. I love cobias. Yeah, they're a great fish. 
What a, uh, what a treat. A cobia fights, you know, right at first, it's not this super signature, oh, that's definitely what we're looking for, but a cobia is gonna fight pretty well, and then they're gonna come up to the surface, you know, fairly quickly. They're not a burrowing fish, but they're a very attractive fish to fish for. Everybody likes the cobia because if you catch one and it's legal size, that thing's usually going home because it's just such a good fish to eat. The, they're very good on the table. One fish will yield a lot of meat. Like when you fillet a cobia, you got a thick fillet off both sides. It yields a lot of meat. Sweet. He'll make it. Yeah, no question about that one. I don't even think we need to measure him, do we? Well, let's measure him anyway. Oh yeah. Well, he's pretty tight. Measure, measure him a little better. Let, let, yeah, let him lay him flat. Oh yeah, he's 35, easy. Sweet. Pick him up. Really good. Right. Put a good hold on him. There you go. <laughs> right on. Yeah, man. Cobia. Good work. So sweet, man. See. I'll Spikes tell you what, back. that's gonna make a nice dinner. a couple of different rigs happening out there. You're fishing with kind of that Carolina rig, like a, a weight, a swivel, and a long leader, and, and your bait, and you were mostly going with the grunts. We had grunts, we had pinfish, um, we had dead ballyhoo, we also had shrimp and crabs, and lighter rods, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna maybe try something a little bit different. I'm gonna drop a, a jig, because I thought, you know, if this is a popular spot, this is probably not a rig that everybody's gonna use. I wanted to try something a little different. And I went with basically a bonefish rod, 15 pound test braid, and just a, about a 30 pound fluorocarbon leader with a jig. And uh, that, was, that was really cool to be able to catch one. You know, you're fishing a grunt like this, and I'm fishing a jig like this, and both of them are, are very effective. Uh-oh, something biting me back here. There he is. Got him that time. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> the biggest grunt in the well. Yeah, it'd be pretty good. You can feel all the little ones nipping them. I could just totally feel the little ones eating it. You know, it couldn't get it in their mouth. And then a big one came and got it. Or what I think is. So the unique thing about that area, which I always, I knew it was a hole, but I didn't realize how specific the drop was and, and how, it, how the fish were literally in that hole as opposed to just everywhere. Um, you know, we made the big run out there. We're fishing, we're fishing, we're fishing. We're watching the, the sonar. We're really seeing it, you know, 35, 40 feet. You know, we're thinking, oh, maybe there's a little drop here or there. But when we finally got on that trolling motor and started moving around and we realized, I looked at the, the uh, Lawrence there and all of a sudden, boom, it was over 100 feet. We went over that ledge and it was a giant hole, not some little hole. It was a giant drop off from 35 to over 100 feet like that. It's a big one, Tom. It's a real, real big like one. Big ones. Well, I can feel it hitting the, the ledge down there, though. But it's dropping from 30 to 80 really quick. It was very obvious that we needed to stay right exactly where we were, and that trolling motor was really helping there. That really we did were help. Able to, to lock it in position, and no matter which way the wind was blowing or, or, or what was happening there, the current or the wind, we were staying exactly in the right spot. And as long as we stayed right there in that spot, we were getting a bite pretty much every time. And they were biting everything. It wasn't a matter of doing it right or wrong. It was a matter of being in exactly the right place. Oh, that's a nice one. Whoa. <laughs> they like to get out of that little slip. Wasn't in a good position. We need one of those giant ones. Remember those big nets we used to have? Yeah. That's what these would be good for right here. All right, here we go, one more shot. All right. <laughs> that one's definitely legal, but look at how he sits in that net. Perfect. Yeah, that is a good technique. Get that circle hook out of him while you mess with you. Oh man, that's nice. I really like these guys. Right on, bud. 
<laughs> Good work. You got the magic spot right here, man. I'm not kidding you. Like, it's not even the magic spot as far as where the boat's positioned. It's the magic spot of where you're standing in the boat, seems like. Well, tell you what, I've been wanting to come out and do this for a long time. So trolling motors have been a huge part of our fishing over the years. We started out um, on the bay boats where we realized, wow, if we put a trolling motor on there, we can actually maneuver around the shallow water, very similar to push pulling a skiff. It um, allows us to go into that shallow water on a, on a bigger boat. And that was a game changer for us. And we started fishing the bay boat in areas where we would never, I never thought we could. And now this newest revolution has been with these GPS trolling motors with the XI-5 came out. For Motor Guide, it was amazing. Now all of a sudden we could anchor that boat in, in anywhere we wanted. It didn't have to be in 10 feet of water. It could be in 800 feet of water and we could anchor it right there instantly. And this is just a game changing experience. So and we're fishing these deep wrecks, these deep reefs. And just not having to drop an anchor and rope down is it, just so much nicer and more efficient. Um, we can bounce spot to spot just instantly. So now guys are starting to realize, wow, I'm not limited to a bay boat on this. I, I want them on my bigger boat my center console, my offshore boat. So the shaft link was, was the variable now. Motor Guide came out with a 72 inch shaft that'll fit these center console boats. And that is, a, again, changing the game. I just got my brand new 26 Yellowfin with a 72 inch shaft on it. And now I'm able to take that boat out there offshore and, and deep drop in 600 feet of water, anchoring just instantly. Or going out to the underwater humps. And instead of having to drift all the time and just rely on that four or five mile an hour current from the Gulf Stream, I can just push a button and stop and anchor instantly for as long as I want to, catch some tuners or whatever like that, and then just move on. So it's really just, just changing the game, allowing center console boats and offshore boats to have the benefit of, of that GPS trolling motor, and they can use that, that trolling motor to navigate shallow water as well. So check it out, the longer shaft trolling motors from Motor Guide. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Buff, built for ultimate sun protection. And by Motor Guide. Nikon. Wiley X. Lithium Pros. And Bernowin Rod Holders. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. You know, we'd like to get to know you better, carry on the conversation, and the best way to do that is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tell the little ones are eating it. Where's the big one? Oh, he just ate it again. All right, come on. And you are really on the spot there, man. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is incredible. The protocol pretty much when we were hooking up is one of us would hook up and then the other would kind of either leave the rod that they had and grab, a, grab another rod, get the net ready, and then kind of wait to see what happened. A uh, bunch with them, Tom, if you got a jig. There's a jig right a here, jig. too. Five with them. Right at the boat. Five of them. But there's a very good chance of getting a double because they're following fish. I don't know if it's just purely opportunistic or if that's just like a safety kind of thing or what it is, but they're a follower. And uh, very similar to, to Mahi Dolphin when we're offshore yeah. fishing here. As you hook one, you're, you're expecting that more are going to come with them. So you got to have that second rod ready and be prepared for it. Yep. Got him. Yeah? Watch out, watch out, dude. Nice. That's awesome. Watch out. He's under your, I'm trying under to get him under your fish. There we go, we're good now. Sweet! That's awesome, man. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. You brought one up and it had two or three with it. And I threw my jig over there and I hooked the other one, put that in the rod holder, grab another jig and throw it to, to so now we have two on, throw another jig over there and I hooked that one, but it came off. I really wanted to get a triple. That would have been, that would have been pretty cool. But I mean, that's, that's how you can capitalize on that situation. This is a nice one here. Woo, I'll get him. There he is. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That's a fish in there. Wow. The cobia is a very unique fish. It's one that a lot of people mistake for a shark when they, when they get one hooked up or see one. And you know, we catch them on the flat sometimes, on rays, catch them way offshore. Um, they migrate up and down the coastline. Um, I know guys catch them all the way up in North Carolina, um, here, all the way on the, the west coast down to Louisiana. They're wide ranging and a very popular fish. Couldn't have picked a better day for the, and a good release. Uh-oh, you still got him. <laughs> that's, that's right nice. on. They get real big. I mean, they catch them over 100 pounds, uh, uh, certainly in the northern reaches of their, of their range. Uh, and I think there have been some caught like that in the Keys. But at the spot where we were, I think there were all sizes, really. I mean, we didn't see any just ultra giants, but all of them were just, just really high quality fish, plenty of action. And uh, luckily, we brought plenty of bait. What I'll a day, buddy. I caught about as many as I can <laughs> catch. And we're going to make this, make it in before the weather hits. Let's get this one. This prefrontal condition. Oh, Ooh. he's jumping into the net. Oh, wrong man. Jumping out of the net. Wrong end. There we go. Coming oh, there he goes. Okay. Perfect. Well, we were going to let him go anyway. Good work. Nice. What do, you say nice. We, what do you say we beat this weather, man? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm good to go. That was as good as we could ever hope for. That's exactly what I was hoping we would find out here. <laughs> it took a while, man. We found it. I'll tell you what, it's a very exact spot. You're off the spot. You're off the spot. That type of fishing was just slightly different than, than the other types of cobia fishing that I've done. And I learned a lot about it. Like, boy, those fish wanted to be exactly where they wanted to be, and there was no getting around that fact. It was all about the spot.